But LA, man, it's like, it's, it's, it's kind of rough. My first week out here, my first week, I'm working out at the gym, and this like Latino thug guy comes up to me, and he's like, hey man, what you wearing that blue bandana for? What you representing, man? And I, I need to apologize up front for my Latino accent. I don't mean to offend anybody. I know it's a sensitive subject. I've got nothing but love for the Latino population, you know? Burritos, tacos, they're great. Lawn care is very inexpensive. Good job, good job, everybody. So, but so this guy's like, what you represent, man? What you represent? I was like, I, I, I'm with the commercials and limited agency, but I'm looking for new representation. Uh, <laughs> Are you with like William Morris? Is this like a rival agency territory? I'm gonna get confused. So I decided I gotta get I gotta get hardcore. I gotta you know I get street smart. You know I did I did a little research. You know I watched some gang movies. I watched this like hardcore gang movie, and it's you know it shows like the seedy underbelly of inner city streets. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's called West Side Story. I know I learned a lot. It was amazing, and I was I was really lucky. The next time I went out of my house. I'm like walking down the street. I live like, you know, in a shady neighborhood. This guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, yo, what's your, what's your problem, yo? You know, I, would, I wasn't even doing anything. Hey, what's your problem, man? Notice that's not my Latino accent. I'm a character actor. I can, I can switch it up. All right. I knew what I had to do. I had to go West Side Story on this guy. So he's, he's like, he's like, what you doing? What's your, what's your problem? I'm like, Officer Krupke came over and broke up the whole thing, it was fine. But you know, you gotta be careful. You, gotta be, you can't pull up the West Side Story in every neighborhood. West Hollywood, for example, you would think in West Hollywood you could do it, you can't. All right? Yeah, I, I'm like walking down the street, I'm a clumsy guy, but I bump into this guy and he turns around. And it's like this six foot four, gigantic transvestite. And he looks at me, with a straight face, looks at me and he's like, you did not just step on my brand new Jimmy Choo. <laughs> Again, guys, I'm a character actor. It's like a light switch. <laughs> you did not just step on my brand new Jimmy Choo's. I'm gonna slap the hetero off your sexual. <laughs> and so I break out the West Side Story. I'm like, hey, hey, you know what? Be, be cool, be cool, you know? And, and it, it made it worse. Seriously, he's like, oh, honey, that's not a pot of beret. That's not even a pot and pan. <laughs> and, and these, these aren't jazz hands. These are jazz hands. You know, I mean, I, I learned, I, you know, I, I actually take dance classes from him slash her like twice a week now. <laughs> so, but LA, but LA is, is, it's a crazy town, man. It's a crazy town. Has anybody, is, nobody in LA is from LA. Anybody here from LA? Woo! Yeah? Really? You guys are probably kind of weird. <laughs> You're probably like cat people. You've got like five cats at home. You know, it's cool. The name's like David. You know, that's fine. I, I, had, a, I had a boss one time that um, she it was kind of sad because she was like married and like middle aged, didn't have any kids. And she named her dog David Jacob Henderson. And, and she would talk to her like she was talking to her like teenage son. Like, two stories. She'd be like, David Jacob Henderson, get in here. David, where are you? David, look at this mess. We just talked about this. You don't even listen to me, do you? I mean, eyes, eyes, mister. What are you thinking? You know, Dave, I just, Dave, we need to, I mean, I don't even know what to do with you. Just go to your room and think about what you've done. And don't be in my shoes, it's disgusting. No one likes my shoes. So she was a fun boss. She was, it was cool. I've, uh, <laughs> I've had a lot of jobs out here, though. I have, you know, I mean, I'm an actor, you know, you gotta, gotta you know, keep paying the bills. And actually, my, one of my weirder jobs, I worked at a crisis pregnancy center, which, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. It's an awkward job, you know, as being a young guy. It's a weird job to tell people you have, you know. Oh, you're a lawyer? I work at a crisis pregnancy center. How you doing? <laughs> you pregnancy test? You okay? All right, that's fine. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was like, all, people asked me if I was a sperm donor. I'm like, at a crisis pregnancy center? <laughs> What kind of crisis would that be? <laughs> like a middle-aged woman comes in, her biological clock is stopped ticking. Guys, we need sperm now. Oh, I'm on it. You know? like, oh. <laughs> so, it was it was just awkward though. I mean, like I go over to like the photocopier, and like somebody had left like a brochure, like an instructional brochure on breastfeeding, with like colored pictures. And I was excited at first because I thought it was porn, but then I was like, oh. 
No, it's it's not. It's you know, I mean, it was just really awkward. I'm like, should I, should I move it? Should I touch it? Is that okay? I don't. I'm a, I'm a little aroused. That's weird. I just I'm gonna come back later. You know. There was one time. Okay, people donate stuff all the time. Whatever. Somebody donated this like travel size oxygen mask. And I was like, it's so cool, you know, it's got a little mask thing, and I'm trying to like fit it on my mouth, you know, it's got a little canister, I'm trying to breathe through it, see if there's any air left in it, you know. It smelled kind of funny, but you know. And so I'm trying to use this thing, figure it out, and my, my manager comes over, and she's like, um, um Joshua, uh, why are you sucking on a breast pump? <laughs> a used breast pump. <laughs> it was gross. I mean, if I'd known who it was, that might have been hot, but I didn't, so it was gross. <laughs> Seriously, but you know, but it was a cool job, you know, like I shouldn't, I should knock it. I learned a lot, you know, I was kind of, I was in the dark about a lot of stuff, you know, growing up, which I know sound is, you know, was a shock, being I'm from Virginia, I've got three older brothers, there's no girls in the house, and, um, you know, I mean, like, I would ask, I would ask questions, you know, whenever I was like 15, I went up to like, my oldest brother, and I was like, you know, um, dude, I was just, I, um, I was wondering, you know, like, you know, with girls, you know, they're, you know, girls, um, how many, uh, how many holes do they have down there? You know, and, and my brother, of course, you know, is like, dude, they've, you know, they've uh, um, got uh, six. Uh, but it was six. Six. <laughs> I think, uh, six. Totally. You know, my, my, my biggest misconception, though, true story, whenever I was like 11 years old, I thought that, like, the ladies that, like, you know, your ovaries and tubes and all your badge equipment, I, I thought that was all on the outside. Like, seriously. You know, the only thing I had to go from was that diagram that they show you in school. You know, the thing looks like, like, like an angry pink alien or something holding two eggs. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, the Billy Goat with like Christmas balls hanging off its horns. I don't I mean, I thought you guys just dangled on the outside like us. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, I, I, didn't, I wasn't sure how it worked. I thought maybe.